Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. There are some dudes that just, all they do is post, uh, like, pictures of hot girls on their stories. Sure. Who's that? Like eight of them in a row. Uh, just like random dudes on Facebook that are fans of ours. And it, it has no, oh, really? it, it has, has nothing to do with they're us. They're not promoting a product. They're not, it's nothing just like, hey, check out this hot girl. Like, that's weird to right. me. Is it? Right. Like, what if you did that in person? What if you walked around <laughs> with a book full of Polaroid pictures of hot girls and just walked up to streams like, hey, check it out? Yeah. See that? Yeah, that's just, I've, I've yeah. done it, though. I've showed people, like, pussy shots, like strangers. Yeah, but that's, women, like, you, that's, that's, women, that's women you know. Uh, right. That's yeah. like showing somebody your, like, trophy case, right? Yeah, but true. imagine you have trophies of other athletes. Like in your house. But, like, but like but they're not even famous they're not even famous it's one thing if you bought like a trophy for like a real event but yeah. if you just got like some 1997 bowling trophy from like a regional thing that's essentially mm-hmm. what that is right yeah this Basically. this should be the, the start of the show by the way yeah, I think we so. usually do some pre-interviews Giorgio just gave us the thumbs up it's it, it's true um, Am I allowed to smoke on this? Yeah, can, oh, Dan well, smokes on it every single day. I'm Dan smoking. smokes weed every day. I just know Dan's always high. I don't know if he's. You know. Yeah, he's, oh, no, yeah. he smokes. Um, I, I, yo, with the with the how podcasting has like, literally like podcasting in the last two weeks has literally changed uh, so much because I think there's just <laughs> especially with like call her daddy and Joe Rogan. Yeah, and I think the cor- corporate like my management who's never given a fuck about my podcast is like real. So this podcast you're bringing oh, back, yeah. like you know, like, and I'm like, yo, everyone relax. Like this isn't supposed to be corporate, right? It's yeah. supposed to be like an under. It's supposed to be underground radio. Well, it's like here's here's what's happening. Like on a on a serious note here with podcasts, it is rep- it's it's replacing terrestrial radio. So that's all gone. You like you're in LA right now, right? Yes. Yeah. So K Rock, you know, they fired their entire morning team. That was the staple of Los Angeles for fucking 35 years. Um, they fire them just because there's no money. Yes. Or... Yeah. The ratings okay. are gone, and everybody's listening to podcasts in the morning. So the biggest times for podcasts are morning drives and afternoon drives. And looking at those statistics, when I saw them, I was like, oh shit. Well, if people are listening to them on the way to work and and home then that means they're not listening to radio anymore at those times. And sure enough, that's what's happening. So you're seeing these little radio stations, your local ones, whatever city you live in, collapsing. Um, and they can't keep up. Or they've got to dock the salary. It's not of, just radio, though. Comedy, yeah. Comedy Central fired their entire executive staff. Yes. Yeah. Like, what, uh, two weeks ago or some shit? But that, like it's, that's why this bleeds over into podcasts as well. Yeah, right. is with Rogan, people are watching podcasts. So you yeah. take... Uh, Bert Kreischer well, I, and your mom's house and all those guys, they're all on video and their video shows are massive. If Comedy Central was doing the numbers that your mom's house is doing right now, mm. um, they'd be in business. Yeah. So The problem is, is too much red tape, right? That's the beauty of a podcast is you guys could do whatever you want. I could do whatever I want. Like in the end, if I don't have advertisers on my podcast, I'll just promote merch. Like, yeah, it, it, it's the the beauty is, is of podcasting is no red tape, right? The minute you sign a check with Clear Channel or whatever, yep. and you know, you just listen to watch private parts, WNBC. Like you're like, <laughs> dude, it's all like that's the old guard. Yeah. And also, I think the fact that the past few years everything is on demand makes the it makes media feel more like a buffet right like you kind of pick and choose what you want to watch instead of like oh i'm stuck listening to the seven stations that are programmed in my car since i was like 15 right like yeah those are the stations you drove to now because you had no choice so you had to listen back then you had to have like taste makers right like you're like i gotta listen to, to k-rock in new york because that's where stern is mm. like you you hope <laughs> to like follow things that you agreed with now you're just searching it out like you're, you're like that's the guy i'm gonna go listen to him on his platform well, the reason why is, is, is the, the movies as well with comedies. So, you know, you used to be able to have, fuck, 10, 12 comedy movies out a year. Yeah. They don't do that anymore. So if you want to follow your favorite comedians that you used to watch in movies, right. if you want to hear what they're saying, you have to go to podcasts. And that's the only way you can have original thoughts and opinions that aren't watered down or PC. And, I mean, look, if you look at the last – let's just take – there should be a – some form of law of like pre-election post-election of 2016 like hey here's what you can say post november 3rd 2016 because i feel like that's when it all changed um that you know everybody became so sensitive and everything else if you look at what's going on in comedy since trump got elected uh they've taken the fun out of every single thing in hollywood there is i can't remember a true comedy that has come out 
in a long time that wasn't like straight to Netflix or something like that. Like in a theater comedy. Like when's the last theater comedy that you uh, saw that one that and Seth, laughed your ass off? The one that Seth, Seth Rogen did with the kids was an attempt at that, but I thought it was kind of cringy, to be honest. I didn't think yeah, it was I, well, I haven't even been to a movie theater and got no sell-off. Yeah. yeah. Like I love that. I love that it's all on Netflix. I did so much better than having to leave your house. Totally. Like, um, but the other thing is the, the non-censorship of it. So even if you if your favorite stars were starring in comedy movies, um, that's going to be watered down through the executives, the writers, and everybody else. Now you can just go listen to your favorite comedian and say whatever fucked up shit comes to their mind. You can watch them smoke weed on air. You can fucking... You feel like you're hanging out with them. And if you're funny now, you're fucking funny and your podcast is huge. Versus a, a corporation can't give you enough press or marketing to make you more interesting or funny in podcasts in my opinion right because they're because in the end their narrative they're trying to drive is based on sales and your narrative is like authenticity mm -hmm. and when you try to blend the two it gets convoluted that's why it's like you know like i think it was cool to see will smith get on social media because you thought you don't need to right like yeah, will fucking yeah. smith but then you see the shit he's putting out and he's pushing the technology. My boy's this video guy. And you're like, holy shit, they're doing all these cool things. They're climbing bridges. They're doing these visual effects. And then he explained, he's like, dude, why am I going to let all these companies speak for me when I could just talk into the camera and tell you how I feel? Whether I whether you agree with it or not, that's the thing, mm -hmm. right? Before actors and actresses could hide behind, well, I'm playing a character. This was my role. Mm -hmm. So now I think some of them could probably take advantage of the fact that like this is what i really stand for and that probably is what scares a lot of people too is drawing a line in the sand because essentially their whole careers have been like well these are characters i play mm. right like i'm not i'm not really a nazi whoever plays the nazi the <laughs> glorious bastards right until you fucking give somebody a microphone and they say some dumb shit right right yeah. and, and i think that like, the that's like part of your appeal is Everybody follows your Instagram or followed it before it got nuked. Um, I don't know if it's still going, but uh, he's back. Oh, at I have a third. I have another one, dude. So this is the crazy part. Like, <laughs> they kick me off. I, I mean, we'll just go. I'll just go buy a new name. Like, yeah, we yeah. just got me, meanie, meanie. I was like, fuck it, let's go with that name. At least that's kind of on brand. And I'm kind of like herpes. Like, you know, like you can kind of like make me go away for a little bit, but I'll always go back. It's too much fun not to be online. It is, and, and it's it's fun following you in particular because you're doing all the shit that everybody wishes they could go out and do on a nightly basis, and that's that's part of the, the, the fun and magic of that as well because, let, let's face it, a fucking executive isn't going to say, here, Kirill, here's a bunch of money to go on Comedy Central and go fuck up a nightclub for the night, right. pour champagne on titties. Because, and... because those executives don't have vision, right? Like, yep. the idea is the person, the you guys sitting there are the ones with the vision. And this is the first, I don't know, I don't know, I like saying first time, but obviously it's probably been a decade of podcasting and social media that you're in control of your own vision. And instead of letting some fucking guy who's like, I'm going to tell you that this is how the business works, like the caller daddy example, right? Like some <laughs> schmuck who thinks he knows what he's talking about with no vision because all he knows is I can cut deals. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and with the caller daddy stitch, I know the one ended up coming back, uh, but the other one is, is gone now, apparently. Yeah, yeah, I, guess, yeah. So. I mean, they, I mean, I don't know the details that far but it seems like she got fucked by her boyfriend and fucked herself over too well he's an executive at hbo and you know he's trying exactly. to cut deals like it's hbo and the problem is those those deals aren't structured like that anymore uh that's not how it works but when i saw their salary i was shocked by it yeah well, i mean ba based on good or bad Oh, great. What, like they were making, I thought they were underpaid. Half a million. And, yeah, half yeah. a million a piece, and they're only doing one show a week. Although, I mean, again, look, all they had to do was wait a, bit, a little bit longer to reown their IP again, and they would have been making probably two to five million a year each. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But instead, the one, one girl goes crazy. She got greedy, and but then that's, she fucked But that's how it up. is, man. A lot of people get bad advice from other people, uh, and then it, especially when they're young, and it makes them make stupid decisions. Like when somebody that you respect and trust tells you to do something, you are probably right. Like the imagine, like I mean, we've all been there. Yeah, right. Yeah. All of us, like yeah. how many times have you taken advice from like a boyfriend or a girlfriend, or you're like, or they're like, "Yo, you're not getting paid enough." Like Joe Rogan, I heard is getting a hundred million dollars in a week, and you're right behind him. How are you working for five hundred k a year? Yeah, but right. it's like, hey, <laughs> but the difference is, 
Joe Rogan put in the work. Mm-hmm. Like that's a 10 year legacy of mm-hmm. podcasting. You understand the value, the library that comes with it. Like you guys stepped in shit and you're very talented. Clearly you do something right that it worked. Plenty of women have tried to do podcasting and never reached those kind of levels. Like it's, but like you got to, the in, people don't like fast trajectories, right? Like Dane Cook is the perfect example. Like people didn't like that. Yeah. Like in the com- in the comedy world, in the podcast world, I feel like you need to earn your keep. Yeah, and Dane Cook is a perfect example. I remember during that that whole period because I was in LA when he fucking blew up like that, and I mean just exploded overnight. Right. The, the thing about it is, is like I I like I'm I don't shit on Dane Cook like everybody else does. I think he made some bad decisions later on. Um, but when he was doing his, you know, stand up specials and fuck, man, he was in a circle in the middle of a goddamn dude, I, arena. I mean, it was, dude, I was there time. at MSG. I was at MSG cause I worked at Caroline. So we produced the show. Like he was like, you were like, you, I stood there and I was like, the only two people to do this before him are George Carlin, Carlin and Dice. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and it, you're just like, he was a rock star during that period. I mean, a fucking rock star. He was also really funny. Him. He was also super yeah, he, funny. Like he was, I but people was hated funny. him because he didn't, they thought that he didn't do the work, right? Like comics love, you know, you got to be on the road. You find your voice. Da, 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 da. There's a certain like, I yeah, I, the, I think the, the other shine that wore off on him was, you know, it's what you're going to do immediately after that. And one of the first projects he did was a documentary on his life on the road um, uh, for HBO with his buddies. And he just came off that. like such an asshole in real life that uh, people were like, oh, "Is that what happened? I didn't really yeah. watch it. Is that what it? Yeah, that's what happened." And he he had some bad management advice and uh, and family members. Yeah, the Didn't brother, his brother is steal his brother millions. stole his money, right? And then he testified against him in court and sent him to jail. So his his brother's in prison right now. That's hilarious. Yeah, for stealing his money. Um, but uh, you know, I, I always look back to like Mister Brooks. Who told him that, that that was a good idea for him to pop up in, in a Kevin Costner movie? Yeah, I mean. <laughs> Look, every every uh, comedian is always trying to, not every comedian, but anybody that's trying to act goes to that period where you want to be, uh, uh, what's his name? Kamel, a serious Kamel actor. Nanjiani. He was like, yeah. stand up. Then he did uh, whatever the fuck on, uh, what was the name of that IT show? Oh, uh, Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley, yeah, yeah. Was, which is really funny, by the way. It's yeah, a good yeah, show. it's a great show. He yeah. did that, then he's starting to do some comedy stuff, but he's done some dramatic. I think everybody vision, envisions himself, just like every athlete wants to be a rock star and every rock star wants to be an athlete. I think these comedians often envision themselves as someone who could be a great dramatic actor. Yeah. Like, a, like a renaissance man, right? Yeah. Well, I think, I think the drama in their life probably comes from real-life drama, so they're like, hey, my life actually does suck. Yeah. I'm probably very depressed. <clears throat> I, sh- I could play a dramatic role. Yeah, I you, mean, look at like look at Robin Williams. Like he yeah. did some fucking good dark roles. Yeah, uh, oh, yeah Father the great. Father of the Year is one of the best movies that he did, right. and nobody even knows about Insomnia, it. Remember? Insomnia, remember? Insomnia fucked great. up. Good Will yeah. Hunting. Look, he won an Oscar for Good Will Hunting. I, mean, I know, but yeah, he was incredible. Like, He's a great actor. Yeah, but that's also actor. like, but you know, but that's like comparing someone to Robin Williams, who was like clearly a fucking. Yeah, I, you t- like, hey, that's a talent of a different level. That yeah. guy you were just talking about, Dan, uh, pop up a picture of this, Giorgio. Put the market. Um, he fucking uh, is. Was Wait, on, am I going to see this or no? You will I don't, not I don't see it. The, 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 oh, the listeners will. No worries. But what is uh, it? Uh, he's he's on. He took a bunch of steroids. Camille Nagiani. Or yeah. Not, how do you say his name? Oh, yeah. and he did Men's Health. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, was I, like, I, I I worked with his wife. His wife, uh, Emily Gordon, worked mm. with us, and when I worked at Comics, she was mm. a uh, she was in the office with us. Yeah, and it's wild when they wrote that movie about their life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right about how like she almost died when they met or something. I yeah. enjoy, I enjoyed that movie. Um, but when I saw him, I don't know what movie this is that he's doing where he's on steroids. But like mm. that's it. Was that what it's called? Oh, the one with uh, uh, with Dave Batista. Yeah, Dave Batista. Yeah. Stuber. Yeah. yeah I so, so. I, I saw a picture of him the other day, and he's all jacked up on steroids, and I was like, oh shit. Um, is that so? Here's my question because I don't know anything about uh, physical fitness. When I see like who, when I see his like men's health cover, yeah, and I'm walking past it, I'm like, all right, that's a comic, and that like uh, in that kind of shit. Look, when I see Kevin Hart, I'm like, you, you're just naturally athletic, mm-hmm. right? Like you're you're black, you're tight, you're in shape. Like it's just like like I get that. Like every black I've ever met is like built like the Batman suit, right? But like when you see 
an Indian comic that ripped. You're like, I'm not used to seeing that. So I'm like, is that natural? Like, no. can someone achieve that? So that's well, why, no. like, when I, I see it on the stands, it depends on what you mean by natural. I mean, well, you... I assume, I assume when people go like, oh, like get into shape, like this actor got in for like the new Marvel movie. I'm like, yeah, you get paid a bunch of money. They give you a personal trainer and a chef. You could probably achieve those results naturally, right? No, or no, you, you cannot. still need. You cannot. Get, you again, still, again, you it depends. It depends on what you mean by naturally. Any man over 20 five years old your testosterone levels start to decrease rapidly and it's because of the food we eat and our fucking just bullshit lifestyle these days uh of so you're being... saying on keto and no matter how much weight i lose i'll never have abs no i need to actually you, you will not something. I, I, and i'll tell you what happens this is for every male that listens every dude out there right all your favorite superheroes that you see chris pratt ryan reynolds uh, I just think they have a person. They have like a team that's like you're being paid so much money. Like fucking get on the treadmill. Here's a chef making you the most purest, healthiest thing that you need for your body, so that in two months you can play a superhero. But there's one person from that team that you're you're neglecting to to leave out, <clears throat> and that's that motherfucking doctor that's giving you that juice, brother. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, I I assume that any really, guy- yes. oh yeah, yeah. Um, well, it's not it's it's not like anabolic steroids though. They're probably the best shit ever. What they're probably getting is uh, straight testosterone injections to bring them up to a level somewhere between eight hundred and thousand, which is what a young like twenty five year old should be somewhere in that range. So you just ter- you turn your body around to a twenty five year old. Then you take things like uh, HCG that. Mm-hmm helps produce natural testosterone. Then you take things like uh, Samorlin, which is basically it, it activates HGH that's already in your system. So you gain muscle rapidly and you burn fat rapidly. But then, of course, you're right about the other part. They definitely have trainers and shit. And they spend all trainers, goddamn, food, they spend all goddamn yeah. day eating. Yep. Like when, uh, when What's-His-Nuts, uh, Henry Cavill was doing the first Superman movie. First of all, he, packed on, he was already a buff dude. He packed on 25 more pounds of muscle over the course of about four months. Right. Yeah. Which means he's a guy that's his side. I think he, I think he's six one or six two. That's that large. He's probably eating something like eight to ten thousand calories a day during that those training periods. Yeah. Fuck Jesus. that. Like that's you're eating and working out all goddamn day. That is unrealistic. You're, you're you at home are never going to look like that. No. And in the best interview that recently came out was uh, Rob McElhaney from um, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Remember when he got uh-huh. shredded? Um, and yeah, he's he was, still shredded. He, he's still shredded. And he was doing a Q and A with. Uh, you know, some of the, the fans of the show and they were like, Hey, how did you, you know, go from fat to that, that shredded so quickly or whatever. And he goes, Oh man, you know, I was just eating healthy. Uh, you know, I was on the treadmill. I was with my trainer twice a day. And then he goes, <laughs> then he goes, uh, you know, and then I was with my doctor, uh, who was giving me testosterone and those, do- those doctor visits are really important. And he goes, I would go back to the gym and then I would go back to my doctor again. And <laughs> <laughs> Three times a week, he was going to get injections, and that's what it is. I we broke it down with uh, Doctor Frank. We had a, a doctor on our show who um, gives Dan and I TRT, mm-hmm. um, and he was breaking it down. He goes, "Look, if you want to look like those guys, uh, the injections you're just coming in every day." And he goes, "It's super quick. The needles are small, and it goes in your stomach." And he goes, "You'll be so, there in so- three to four months." So, question: I literally feel like I'm learning a lot right now, so mm-hmm. I have some questions. Yeah, fire away. If I don't work out and I just take that shot, what happens to me? Then you'll look like me, basically. <laughs> oh, I'm down. Because I don't I, work I, out. <laughs> but I mean, let me see a muscle. Let me see a muscle. Because uh, I have nothing. It's, yeah, wow. But see, I, I want it's just, that. That's, I mean, I, I haven't worked out in a year and a half. I'd like to work out. It's just I haven't felt like it, so I didn't. And to <laughs> no, be my, honest, my, my. the difference between me working out and not working out is real slim. So I'm just like, eh, I can – I'll, I'll take care of that yeah, one too. I think I need to work out because I just don't have a manly presence to me. Like I still feel like a child. Like even when I talk to my parents, like I don't have like like you guys are sitting there and you look like men. Like the way you could wear a watch, right? Like my look at this thing. It's like a <laughs> fucking little. It's like a girl's wrist. Like I really <laughs> like I, that's. I think I don't know. Maybe that's why people don't really meet to me because they're like, Carol looks more like a victim than a fucking perpetrator. <laughs> Oh, well, I don't know. You do look sort of like a perpetrator, just not in the way you're. you're yeah, saying. yeah, yeah. No, I know what you. <laughs> but you, you've gotten really thin, man. Uh, so you're doing something. Yeah. Whenever somebody Dude. says, "By the way, you've gotten really thin," what they're really saying, that's a backdoor compliment. What they're really saying is, "You yeah. used to be a fat piece of shit." No, and, I, no. and I and I appreciate that. I, I, dude, you were never fat. The, you were never fat. No, I was. I was, dude. I saw a photo of myself at a party where at four in the morning I'm holding a champagne flute. 
and there's a chicken nugget hanging off the edge of it like it's like a, like a lemon wedge. Yeah. And I was like, that's probably peak fat Kirill. But no matter, you know, people, my girlfriends would lie to me, like, Kirill, you look hot. You know, like how they, everyone still tells you you look good. And you're like, compliments don't help. When people started calling me fat on Instagram, like, and I got tagged in enough photos, I was like, I guess I got to change something. Yeah, we well, look, look, you look, you look pro, great. I'm, I'm, I'm pro bullying. Pro, Same. Pro yeah. bullying. Same. Yeah, we don't mind it here either. Uh, Look, the, I don't the rest mean like, yeah, does. listen, listen, like, you know, there's limits to everything, right? Like, but I got where I am by my mom, you know, beating me with a belt. And keep, <laughs> like Eddie, Eddie, I think Eddie Griffin said it. He's like, my mom whooped my ass out of the penitentiary. Like mm. my mom beat me <clears throat> and then sent me out into the world properly. And you're good to go. You're, you're in Los Angeles now. You're not in New York anymore. I am straight in L.A. because I don't have any gigs, so there was no point staying in New York. Might as well be in L.A. where the merch business is mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. kind of just work, try uh, to stay alive. You, you have a girlfriend now? I do. Oh, uh, you've been dating this one for years. It now. seems yeah, yeah, yeah. Last time we talked, uh, yeah, three. At this point, like where who? Like I got lucky to at least have somebody during a pandemic, and then to keep her in L.A., I had to like we got a puppy. Mm, so I now saw let's that, forget yeah. it. So now I'm just, that's it. And that makes like how, how get, I know you, you seem to have some image issues with regard to your manliness. And I wonder if the puppy has made that worse or not, because I feel like a bitch around my dogs. Uh, like I, I, I can't stand to hear them whining and stuff. It's like my child. And when I feel I'm, uh, I'm, I'm yeah. very embarrassed by that, to be honest, but <laughs> it is what it I've is been what noticing that I like care about something more. Yeah. It sucks. I'm like, it? I'm like, Oh my God. If so, and I was like, I made fun of those dog owners my entire life. Mm -hmm. And then I look at this thing and I'm like, if somebody hurts you, I will literally murder them. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't necessarily, I don't know if it's about the dogs necessarily. It's just, I think that maybe humans need that. Like there's something about, the uh, frailty of life. It's the dog. It's the dog. Trust <laughs> me. I don't. I, I think I, it's it's definitely not like my cell phone street like shit, and this thing costs just as much as the dog. <laughs> the thing about uh, the do you know this thing that I didn't I, I learned on Reddit is um, cool evolutionary fact if people believe in evolution uh, is that dogs mm, uh, evolved to mimic baby eyebrows. Yep. So that we would associate them with babies yep. as puppies, and we would fall in love with them as we do with babies. And, I was and like, "That's fucking wild." It's the same thing with children, though. Uh, like, it used, there used to be a thing where an er, an early man, if you want to call it man, uh, Homo sapiens, uh, parents, particularly fathers, would kill their child if it looked threatening to them. You know what I mean? Like, if it had a furrowed brow or something like that, or it was deformed or fucked up, they would it just murder it. So babies over time, well, it's, it's through selective breeding. Do you think clearly. we're done evolving? No, I mean that's not how evolution works, is it? I think we are. Maybe and here's my here, here's why here's my only argument, and it's backed up by no science. It's basically <laughs> it's it's basically this right throughout history, the weak have always died, and this is the first time in history where through medicine and science we save the weak or or. You know, usually nature would prevent the procreation of quote unquote evolutionary cul de sacs, right? Essentially. Mm -hmm. So like and then the strong would move on and move on. Like like if I was born with one leg, in theory, evolution states I shouldn't be allowed to reproduce. Right? Uh, theoretically, yeah. I mean over over Am a I long, correct? Uh, uh, yes, over a uh, over a long enough time period that is correct, but it's it's uh Usually it would be something that affects your ability to procreate directly, which is interesting that you bring that up because that might be a, a, a social means of evolution that would prevent you from procreating. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's, it doesn't make it like you, if you were missing a leg, you still fuck. But if nobody will fuck you, you still can't breed. I wonder if that's part of it. Yeah, evolution. but no, my, my thing was if you're born without a leg, we shouldn't to, – for, for the sake of progression through completely – just through science, not – so I don't think, you know, that person should not be allowed to procreate. <clears throat> Because whatever happened to give them that one leg shouldn't be continued into our into the the human genome. I don't know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but that, that you what, know what I'm saying. What you're describing is 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 eugenics, eugenics essentially, yeah. right? Yeah. But, yeah. I'm I'm aware that I'm sure Hitler spoke greatly of this. I just think from a science <laughs> from a science standpoint, I understand that. Trust well, I, me, I'd I, be the first one killed. No one would let me reproduce. I wonder. I'm well I, aware. I, I, I wonder though if it, uh, you know, once once 
culture and society is brought into that argument or not argument, but, it, but into that process, then what we value as a culture becomes uh, a tool, Just physical. a tool. Well, no, it becomes a tool of evolution because we're the ones that are deciding who breeds or if we right. breed. Right. Yeah. So right now people that are people with higher IQs with more advanced degrees are either not having children or they're having less and way later in life. Right. Agreed. So, so that's that's. I think a, that's because I think ignorance fact. is bliss, right? Isn't that the f- ignorance is bliss, right? Yeah. When you are a little more intelligent, you kind of carry the weight of the world on your shoulders a little more, and you mm-hmm. wake up every day kind of being like, "What? Why would I bring someone into this world? Or why would I? Do? You know, you question things more." Yeah, for sure, and that's why I think uh, we really got to start fucking. Uh, mm-hmm. Everybody should be forced to get an IQ test. If you're above like a one ten or mm-hmm. so, you should just be pounding twenty four hours a day. For the next ten years or so, let's create a bunch of fucking just smart. Just... Create a bunch of smart children, right? Right. Uh, everybody from uh, all the road scholars, like, sorry, you all got to fuck. Like, Not where's babies. Albert Einstein's like offspring? Well, he didn't like, have any he, kids he, because he. Well, he had. God he had, damn it! How do you know all this? What do you? How do you? <laughs> he had. I, that's not true. He did have two kids, didn't he? He was married to his uh, first wife in Switzerland. And he actually gave her the money from his Nobel Prize. I think it was one point three million dollars to How get it. How the fuck do you know this? I don't remember autism. Uh, to get a divorce, uh, he gave her the money and said, "Don't ever talk to me again." Then he married his first cousin. Ah, you don't say. But they didn't have a sexual. He had three kids. Yeah, he had three children. But I don't know if any of them existed anymore after that because he basically just gave this woman money and, and abandoned his family. He was doing science. Like I, he had to you don't create. have time for family. No, dude. That's what happens when you But science. he did have his old cousin to uh, do his dishes, laundry, and suck his dick, I guess. I don't know what their relationship really was, but it seemed like it probably was that. Did he have siblings? Do you think he, did he have siblings? Um, like, is there like know. a dumb Einstein? Yeah, there was uh, Ted. Fucking yeah. Ted Einstein was a real piece of <laughs> shit. Dave um, Einstein? <laughs> flunked out after uh, eighth grade. He had one? Just a, just a moron. Yeah, just a complete fucking idiot. Born yeah. with one leg. He had a sister. Um, and <laughs> Maja. <laughs> oh, he had a sister named Maja? Uh, he had six siblings. Oh, six? Yeah. Jesus Christ. Jesus. Raphael Jett, J-E-T-T-E, I guess. Sure. Heinrich, uh, and then several others. That's weird. What the fuck do those dum-dums do? Uh, yeah, like... I- not enough to get remembered, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to, to try to live up to that last name. And they were like, hey, man, I don't understand why you can't pass a fucking driver's test at the DMV. Your name's Dave Einstein and yeah. you're a fucking idiot. Ted. So Ted. do you think the other five Einsteins are the reason we use Einstein sarcastically? You're like, ah, way to go, Einstein. It has like, to be. Sp- the other five siblings ruined Albert's fucking reputation. That's what I think. Well, at least but, it's not Hitler. They they canceled that name. You're not going to run into like a Steve Hitler. No. Ever. I, no. I, yeah. Is there anyone like, on like, earth named Hitler right now at all? There has to be. There ah. has to be like some weird country somewhere. Yeah. Isn't Bill, somebody... Bird, Bill Bird talks about right? He's like, there's no one naming their kids Adolf. It's literally like the Ford Bronco, right? Like yeah. it's just like one bad incident. They're like, but well, it's they're coming back. The Bronco yeah. back. So Bronco maybe back. Hitler's going to. I Maybe hope. Hitler at some point is going to resurface. You know, COVID <laughs> fucked us again on that Bronco. So Dan wants the obviously the white one. Um, yep. I used to own that exact white Bronco when in are you, LA. Are you guys? Are you guys like car guys? No, no. Don't care about cars at all. Just OJ. Yeah. So we've got a sign you know, OJ Simpson jersey yeah, he's right, right it's behind right here. us. Here so we we'll just love OJ and yeah. his work. Seriously, there's uh, a signed OJ Simpson jersey right here. Big yeah. Stop uh, it. Yeah, it's, it's hanging you, up on the wall right there. Oh wow, that's awesome! Yeah, so with the with the white Bronco, so this is dead serious. I own that exact model, and that was my driver in L.A. And every valet, you know, you've been in L.A. long enough now. Every valet I showed up to with the with that white Bronco was always like, "Oh no way!" And everybody would want to come and take pictures with it. I cut out a head of O.J. Uh, with his hands up, and I I taped it to the back, like a uh, on the passenger side, mm. so that way he was always looking out the window whenever I pulled up to a valet. Because let's face it, everything oh in LA God, is a valet. Everybody would take pictures with it, and then it got stolen when we shot Range Fifteen. Mm. I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to put uh, Cuba Gooden Jr. back there instead. Ah, because you want the actor version of yeah. it, of OJ. I like. I, that. I just want to, you know, pay it forward. <laughs> yeah, you should. You should. Now the best Cuba po- is never not in trouble. By the way, no, that's well, he gets handsy. He finds a reason yeah. to get in trouble. Yeah, yeah. Ever, I've like you see. Well, I used to see him at parties, and you're like, he's a. For an Oscar-winning actor, you're like, we shouldn't be 
doing the same thing. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Right? At yours, yeah. did he pull his dick out? No, I wish he did. Okay. So I would have taken a photo. I, we were at a, and this was right before camera phones. The one time I saw him out at a fucking rager, like at a bar, he got on top of a pool table, buck naked, um, dick out, everything. Um, Big and, dick. and was just dancing. Normal size dick. Uh, nothing crazy that you were, you know, it's not like the meme that's going around. Like, it's not like that guy. No, not that fuck that guy. Yeah, but it's a decent sized hog where it's good enough that you're like, all right, shit. But he's jacked as fuck. Like, he was still like, um, you know, at the time, he was still like Jerry Maguire jacked where you were just like, oh, Jesus Christ, man. Steroids? Yes. Tough. Okay. Again, you. Black or steroids st should be a thing. Ster though, steroid, black guys are all steroids ripped. versus right. just men's health testosterone replacement therapy. That's a there's a wide gap between those. I mean, yeah. you're going to see for most people that are on TRT, you're going to see their test level somewhere in the 800 range, seven to 800. For people that are on antibiotic steroids, you're going to see like a thousand to 1200, if not higher in some cases. So it's like night and day. Anyways, black or steroids? Black or steroids is always a great thing. Black or steroids. Gay or yeah, from Atlanta right? is another great game. Are mm -hmm. you gay or are you just from Atlanta? Um, I don't even know that one. Uh, Why? There's just like, there's so many gay guys in Atlanta. No, you, no, you, you ever hear the, that voice like from the Chrisleys? Oh, oh God, that's great. I'm not gay. I'm just from Atlanta. They all have that real like, oh, good, it's nice to meet y'all. It's like a, it's like a, oh, it's, if you, great. if you took the, uh, the French cadence to how they speak and applied it to Southern English. That's what it is. <laughs> right. Wow. And all of those things are gay. So it's like that guy's got to be gay. Yeah. Right? I'll, I'll, have, gotta be gay I'll have a, a, a libs <laughs> patty melt plate, uh, hash browns, double covered, scattered. Um, yeah. Oh gay or from Atlanta, black or steroids is one. I always wanted to get like super high with Cuba Gooding Jr. And just have him flip back into radio again. When he was playing the oh, RIP, uh, by the way, radio died uh, he did, earlier this year. He did die. But imagine if you were uh, that fucked up, high as shit, and he started going full radio. No, wait, you. wait. What if you were high as shit and it was Tom Hanks as Forrest Gump and he would not break character? And you're like, mother, <laughs> I know it's you, Tom. And he's I like, know. he just wanted. I feel like it. Tom Hanks would be annoying as fuck. Though. I, I think that might put you in. Like, if you were on mushrooms and that happened, I think that might fuck your brain up. If Tom Hanks oh, was, yeah. was yeah, if yeah. he was Forrest Gump and, and would not break, break character, yeah. I think that would, I think that would ruin your life. Honestly, I've never had a bad trip. I've done acid and mushrooms, probably a combined thousand times, give or take. And I've I, I've never had a single bad trip. I've had sh like people are irritating me or whatever the fuck, but I've never like freaked out and had a bad trip. I think that one would ruin my life. Oof, that would be tough. Right, because it's a that's a that's like an interesting Tom Hanks role. Because every time I look back and think about it, it doesn't even look like Tom Hanks to me anymore. Like the Tom Hanks I know now yeah. is just like. <laughs> yeah, it's Tom Hanks. Yeah, it's just Tom Hanks. I mean, the Tom Hanks I know and love is it's from Philadelphia. Big. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Tom Hanks, Philadelphia. That would be a weird one. I think for me, if I was super high, Billy Bob Thornton as uh, Sling, Blade? Sling Blade would be the worst for me. Carl? Like, I wouldn't want to. If you just spend a, a full fucking eight hour night with him, but what is he gonna say? Mm. He's just gonna mm. grunt and talk about fucking French fries all night. I don't want to hear that but shit. It's that look, it's that. Mm, I don't want to see that fucking look. All just night. with his chin jutted out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would just constantly like pu push his chin back in. Like, hey, well, let's get that posture just, fixed there, buddy. Just, yeah, that tuck one, that thing in. You're gonna trip on something. That one would freak me out. Or uh, McConaughey in Dallas Buyers Club. I love McConaughey. Oh Jesus. yeah. I have. I haven't brought this up in almost a year now, <laughs> but I love. What? I love the idea of Matthew McConaughey playing Jesus. He, Dan's dream is for Matthew he, McConaughey to play because Jesus, he doesn't ever his but voice Matthew McConaughey his, his like voice he doesn't do any acting he doesn't ever it's do just, any acting his voice is always Matthew McConaughey's voice it is, always yeah. no yeah. matter right. what role he's playing so I want to hear McConaughey talk like say just go through the Bible and pull out all the red parts right and read all that just just write that film yeah you should ask write McConaughey it. <laughs> it's not I mean you don't even have to write it. He was in uh, Wolf of Wall Street, you know, playing a hardcore New York fucking uh, <laughs> yeah. stock, stock guy. And he still was McConaughey. He was like, hey, man. Get the Lincoln numbers, Lawyer man. was fucking dope. Yeah. Love that movie. Still, still McConaughey, though. That. No accent whatsoever. Yeah. Never even None. attempted an accent in any of these things. The only one Yo, he did know? do an accent was for True Detective, and he just made it more country. More McConaughey. But he didn't go <laughs> further. <laughs> he didn't do anything differently. He just made more, yeah, more McConaughey. He just added a little dash of McConaughey onto that McConaughey. If you, could, you know what I found out this week, by the that? way, guys? Did you know Denzel had a son? Yes. Yeah, uh, he plays football. Okay. No, I didn't. No, check this shit out. Yeah. I'm sitting there on the internet. They're like, yo, nobody knows that Denzel has a son. He's the new star of the Chris Nolan film Tenant. Mm. He's 
Ricky, that guy from Ballers, the guy yeah. with the beard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait, Ricky really? Jarrett or whatever. Yeah. That's Denzel Washington's son. No yeah, way. And no one, dude, that's nuts. When I saw that, I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. Uh, what's his name? John David Washington. Yeah. Um, he's. Uh... Fuck man, and he's a big actor. He's I mean, really, he's, he's a really, like he's a time. really, he's a really good actor. I don't, I didn't know this was right. his fucking son. I had no idea. It was he's Denzel's got kids, son. and he's been married for. And I will say this: it wasn't like a crazy, like out of wedlock. Like he's been married to the same woman for like forty years. Well, crazy, yeah, crazy what I guy. do know about Denzel Washington is he, without ever alerting the press, goes to uh, VA hospitals and fucking gives people money. Yep. Pays off people's loans and debt and shit like that that are veterans and cops and shit like that all yeah. the goddamn time. Yeah. And then when it comes Dude, time Denzel. when it comes time to talk about social issues, he still does it. He does both things right. Yeah. Which is fucking rare in today's world. Everybody wants to go into their corner and get on their side and get their talking right. point little list handy so they can fucking check off their bullet points. Here's a guy that has all the fame in the world and doesn't even use it. He just uses his money that he's made off that fame to do the right thing every single day. Yeah. Good dude. Dude, seems like dude, that should Band be on pretty Fire easy. is probably top five best movies ever made. It is, yeah. I used to. I've I've probably seen that movie forty or fifty times to be honest. Because that, that's incredible. That is that is that should resonate with uh, veterans. Honestly, if you haven't seen that movie, you should see it because a lot of us felt like we did a lot of fucked up shit and we're on a fool's errand and lost a lot of friends for no reason and and faced a lot of uh, psychological and emotional damage from that and. The, that is a fantasy for a lot of people the, to do something big and important and empathetic to buy back some of the shit we lost. You know what I mean? Right. And close out the chapter, final chapter of his yeah. life. With that, yeah. Right? Denzel's the it's fucking kind of wild. dude. Dude, you know? people call it an action movie. To me, I always say it's a love story. I'm like, it is literally, they're like, what's your favorite romantic, like your favorite love story movie? I'm like, it's Man on Fire. Like, yeah, there's all the amazing shit that you want to see him do. But at the end, the way, no other movie I've seen build that kind of like hour long love story between him and Dakota. Yeah. So that they can rip it away and you actually are like, fuck yeah, stab that guy in the face. Like, Mm. yeah, Yeah. that's how we view uh, OJ made in America too. Uh, Mm. That that 10 part doc. Uh, Same thing. It was a, it was a love story, crew. It's always a love story. It was a love story between Man on Fire, OJ and himself. Black Taken. Yeah, he, look, if you go through his Denzel's list of fucking movies and hits, I mean, it is astonishing. He's he might be. I mean, if you if you take someone uh, someone's character as a human being into account, he might be the best actor of all time. Oh because yeah, because his, act, yeah, his yeah, acting yeah. credentials are in line, and I can't think of anybody that's been more helpful without making it about him in the history of of acting. Like who else does that? Everybody uh, else. Paul Newman was really good at it, and Gary Sinise. But there's very few. Gary Sinise is very another few. one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Paul Paul Newman as well. A lot of people don't know that Newman's salad dressing. That's his. A hundred percent. That's lemonade. Yeah. Yeah. And it all goes to charity. A hundred percent of the pros. A hundred percent of the profit for the entire existence of that company has gone to charity. One hundred percent. They yeah, never right. fuck it. Like they pay their their people salaries, obviously, but they don't like Paul Newman and his estate never made a dime off any of that shit. No, it's great. Uh, try to training day, by the way, not to go back to Denzel. Training day is fucking great, and I was trying to find this for you guys. There's a movie that Denzel, I guess, did. I saw it a long, long time ago. I'm trying to find Hurricane. It's like one of his earliest. It's one of there's. It's so glory. Bad. It's like it's like where he's like an Irish cop. Uh, Denzel Washington was a, it was an Irish cop. The, I, I want. I don't want to be wrong. Hold on. <laughs> I don't want to be wrong. You smoking a joint right now saying Denzel Washington as an Irish <laughs> Played cop. an Irish cop. <laughs> it's the greatest I'm telling flex I'm literally of all trying time. To, I'm trying to scroll through his IMDb. He was in full white face the whole time. <laughs> wait, wait, wait I, might be, I might be a little racist there because uh, the name of the movie might be The Mighty Quinn, and I think I assumed Quinn was going to be like an Irish last name. <laughs> I'm trying to see what this is. You were racist I'm, in the wrong I'm, direction. I'm Did he play I'm Seamus sucker. O'Malley in that movie? <laughs> uh, I'm trying to find it. Xavier <laughs> Quinn is the guy's name. Oh, I think that was a true That's story. <laughs> you know what my favorite Denzel movie was? Where he was the white <laughs> Irish <laughs> cop, dude. <laughs> I mean, he was good in Heat, too. He ate Lucky Charms the entire yeah. fucking movie, dude. He was amazing. Uh, uh, he would not stop drinking Guinness and just beating his wife. Like, it yeah. was amazing. Wearing wife beaters, yeah. <laughs> All right. You know, yeah. it's good weed. 
<laughs> it is good weed. Uh, while we're at it, I'll let you light up. We got some sponsors who pay for this whole shit, shit wagon to be on the air. First and foremost, ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Best in the mid, the best in the biz, that mattress. Uh, I love those goddamn things. Yeah. And uh, everything is 25% off in the store. Mattresses, sheets, pillows, uh, sheets, adjustable bases, you name it, it's 25% off. And as always, they get a 36-month pay-as-you-go program, no interest. So if you got that Trump money, uh, you can go ahead and throw a few ducats that way. And look, it's like 20 bucks a month if you're going to get a new mattress yep. set and everything. Um, and the pillows are just as good as the goddamn mattress. Right now, they're also giving away two free pillows um, when you get a mattress. I don't know who's beating these guys. I don't know how they're making money with 25% off, to be honest with you. But um, um, I'm sure they're figuring it out. Maybe it's a front. F- for a cocaine operation? No. Oh. For what? Some, something. I mean, if that's it and they didn't tell me, I'm going to be fucking pissed. Yeah. Because I've been paying for cocaine this whole time. <laughs> you, don't imagine send me a bed. Send me some drugs, bitch. Imagine if you got a bed. <laughs> you, you cut open the mattress. It's just full of kilos of cocaine. Oh, man. It would be would, so good. I'm hard. Yo, I, did right we now. talk about this? How I found out how people smuggle drugs into Canada? We talked about this last time? No. I found out the craziest way to smuggle drugs into Canada. How's that? Into or out of? From to, from there to here or here to there? From here, it doesn't matter. You can okay. go either way, but the best system apparently is out of America into Canada. Okay. Best way I've heard. What you do is you pull up on the closest mall next to the border, mm-hmm. and you look for Canadian plates. And then you strap all your drugs underneath that person's car, and you follow them across the border. If they get clipped, it's on them. If they make it through, you just kind of drive until they pull over, and then you steal your drugs back from underneath their car. All right. There's a lot that can go wrong there, but I admire that effort. And no, I'm into that. Right, but like, I'm into the, like, you know, if you're, if you're, you know, I'm, I'm sure you're not moving heavy weight, but. Hey. Right, no, of course not. And if you're on drugs like we are, uh, do them on a ghost bed. <laughs> Yes. Oh, I forgot how that was a ghost bed. You know what? You, well, here's we what, do too all the time. Don't worry about it. Here's what would be awesome, dude, is if because they do giveaways and shit all the time. Oh, yeah. Right now they're doing a giveaway. Whoever writes the best review of our show uh, on iTunes on yeah. Drinking Bros, uh, you can get a free mattress. But it would be awesome if they did a giveaway where one one of the mattresses you buy, you it's just filled with cocaine. Every fifth mattress. It's like uh, <laughs> it's like the Willy Wonka golden ticket thing. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Instead of golden tickets, your bed stuffed full yes. of fucking cocaine. Oh, oh, that would be the best. Think about it, Ghostbed. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. Next up, we got Killcliff, CBD.com. Um, man, I, I don't know if you were in the CBD game, Kirill. Um, these guys have mastered it, Killcliff. Mastered it. I, I, I was addicted to CBD for a while. Like those just like candies and everything mm. yeah and then uh i needed to move on to like harder harder stuff. shit yeah well actually you know yeah. having uh thc in your system makes cbd work better it does yeah really so, yeah. oh yeah 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 so if you're doing this like, that's what somebody explained to me when i first started taking it. they were like uh you know someone who you know occasionally uses thc for example it's going to metabolize in their body more quickly and you'll see the effects more quickly and i'm like what about somebody that uses thc all day every day How's that yeah. going to affect me? And then all the heads in the room turned and looked at me. I'm like, look, I'm just asking a question. Yeah, I'm just speculating. This is for the I gotta, audience, I got to ask all the questions. Yeah. Right? You have to. You have to. With uh, kill, Here it is. Uh, it's, it comes in this fucking what is it? fancy can. Is it like, is it like uh, 25 milligrams. It? Yeah. yeah, it's a carbonated RTD drink in yep. a can. Ready to drink. It is, you think uh, 20, that's going to be – is that going to be the next thing? It's, like, it's when, the new uh, world. This shit is taking off. And it's like, what I mix my vodka like, with all the time we mix, now. Do we mix that's drinks That's what I was going to ask. Yes. That's what I was going to ask. Like obviously all bars and nightclubs are closed and I'm never going to work again. But like if you go out – at some point eventually is that going to be the new like kind of like i can get drunk and feel a little loosey-goosey yes so dan and i uh by the way promo code drinking bros 20 percent off and free shipping at (laughs) killcliffcbd.com best in the biz uh we went to a tailgate at at the army navy game Mm -hmm. and the bar was serving them so it was vodka and cbd uh vodka and killcliff cbd every everybody was drinking those and i was like oh shit i get it well, it's like where you can't smoke, right? I like to smoke and drink. Like when I'm out yep. at a party, I'd love to have a joint in my hand and I'll be taking shots. Mm. Uh, and then if I can't <laughs> smoke, then that seems like the solution. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it is. I agree. Um, they're, they're some of the finest. Uh, and then last but not least, D'Anthony, Thompson Cigars. Dude. Oh, yeah. I got a hard on for these guys. You do. And everybody was like, <clears throat> God damn it, man. Why? Best in the biz. They are, yeah. It's... Uh, 
I, if you're a cigar fan, then that's a place to go, thompsoncigar.com. Actually, I, I get their magazine every month, too. I don't know why. Yeah. Uh, uh, you're a big cigar guy. I am. I've got a couple hundred of them, yeah. And they, they sent me. Is it like scratch and sniff? I wish it was. Like, I would want a cig- like because they all smell different, right? Do they have yeah. all different? The, it's it's all Look different. That. Like it's it's uh, that the reason I like cigars is for the same reason I like scotch, whiskey, and steak because you can make it taste like a lot of different things and coffee as well. Like you, it's a very deep, it's a rich palate, but it's it's very diverse, and that's what I like about it because I like enjoying my food. I'm not trying to eat a bunch of fucking bullshit. Right? Exactly. Uh, they got over twelve thousand different cigars. You can't. Um, there's no cigar that you're that's legal in this country that you're not going to be able to find on this website. I promise you that. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, they've been over like a hundred years in the business at this point. Yeah. Like They just um, sent me. I feel like we're selling Ferraris. Like it's that nice where you're just like, yeah. yeah. I'm sure everybody knows. Yeah, but, yeah. Well, uh, they never do promo codes. Um, Dan was a, a massive, massive fan, and they reached out and they said, "All right, cool." Yeah. Um, for a limited time, uh, Thompson <laughs> is offering 15% off of orders of 75 bucks or 20% off of orders over 99 mm. as a Father's Day special. Yeah. Uh, to take advantage of these incredible savings, you simply have to go to thompsoncigar.com. Use the promo code Drinking Bros. Uh, when you're ready to check out, uh, that website is Thompson, T-H-O-M-P-S-O-N, cigar.com, and use the promo code Drinking Bros, and uh, you're good to go. That's everything on the planet. Mm-hmm. How is business these days? Have you heard when you're when you're going back to work and doing clubs and all that shit? Because after the riots and the protests, like no one's wearing masks, and nobody gives a fuck about COVID anymore. Right. Uh, to be honest, I don't even know if I want to go out anymore, right? Like, really? maybe this was... Uh, like I'll still go out. Like if you guys come to town, we'll go I don't. I don't think we'll he, I don't think you're saying because of COVID. You're just like I'm done with people, right? Like yeah, I think no, no, no. This isn't out of a, a, a. It is a health thing, but it's more of a health thing for my body from just the abuse I take on the road, <laughs> oh, yeah. not from like, not from like. Guys, I've been sharing joints and alcohol with people for ten years. Like my body, at least for me, is like a pile of trash, right? Like there's nothing that knock on wood hopefully can hurt me obviously i could spread it to other people but realistically like i don't know if i just want to do parties anymore for a financial purpose right yeah i just found i just kind of found my i got stranded here i kind of found my groove with the merch a little bit more it's kind of taken you know my whole life people have always been what are you going to do after party what are you going to do after party what's the next step and party forever and i always was like well diplo's like 40 something or like tiestos that way or these people like look at like everyone you can still be old and and still pursue your craft but at the same time like yeah i don't want to be like 50 hanging out with you know 19 year old girls in like some shithole town yeah you don't want to be johnny Uh, you don't want to be johnny depp you don't want to be in your mid 50s and still be wearing leather like 16 leather bracelets and a lot of scarves right right right. and i never had i I was never cool so there's not even any cool to hold on to or try to pretend to be (laughs) so to me i think like i'll still go do like once a month let's throw a party or let's all go drinking or i'll meet you in vegas and i'm still gonna be a degenerate but i just think my time is better served running the brand, mm. the merch. Yeah. And I can still kind of, dude, Reddit opened up my eyes to so much more shit because after getting kicked off Instagram the last time, I was like, you know what? Reddit allows everything. Let me go try to push my Reddit. And the beauty of it is the merch creates the same content that the parties did because all these girls bought the butt plug and now my entire Reddit page is just girls <laughs> uploading shit. I would never have been able to get them to do it at a party anyways. Right. So like, <clears throat> it's almost like this community over there of people who are like, about my party life, but they uploaded themselves. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, speaking of those butt plugs, do you test out these products with your girlfriend? No. Okay. I wondered how my, that I know, I know my, uh, we just kind of find a butt plug and go, yes, do that one. And, we put <laughs> it, uh, and then we didn't realize that we picked one a little too big. Like we had porn stars hitting us like, <clears> yeah, this is a little... Like, but that's what made it great too on Reddit because you just see all these girls just trying to pop it in. So this wasn't like a wine tasting where you and your girlfriend uh, sat around and just like, sniffed yeah. it and then it's looked like an, at it, and put it in, yeah, pulled, held it up to the light and then pushed it in. And uh, then, yeah. no, 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 it was strictly just like that one looks good. Let's do it. Yeah, because we got some butt plugs sent to us, right? But they came in right. different sizes, and you could immediately see from looking at it. I was like, oh, that's way too big. Mm. I don't know who was gonna... the first one. It's right. like it's like yeah. an apple. Exactly. I was like, nobody's stuffing that in their no. asshole. Well, um, but the smaller one, I was like, all right, play ball. Like that, that'll work for most people. 
yeah, I've never stuck a butt plug in my butt, so I don't even know how I would judge. But like, like, here's what it should tell you everything about it. Is a butt plug is shaped like a, a spade, right, essentially? Mm-hmm. Yeah, on a deck of right? cards. Yeah, On a but deck of cards. A three-dimensional so spade, yeah. And you assume that your butthole is pretty clenchly, like, it's pretty clenched. And that little fucking, that little base thing, that wine glass base thing, yep. that's what really your butthole should be at. And then you see that, like, that bell part, and you're like, how the fuck is my asshole going to stretch around that? Yeah. That's the whole thing, just... Like the fact that it needs that kind of rampage to get into your ass should tell you everything. Yeah, it, look, tell you everything. I, w- not, I wish you were drawing this all on a whiteboard right now, same. to be honest, because I feel like the public. Needs I could to get know. you a whiteboard. Yeah, let's I, do <laughs> I actually have a whiteboard right here. Uh, uh, mer- merch wise, though, you put out some of the craziest shit that I've seen. Was there anything that you rejected and you were like, all right, this might be pushing it a little too too far? So. I try to make the merch kind of thing started as like a joke. And then we were like, oh, look, I grew up. I don't know if you ever heard of a company called T-Shirt Hell. Yeah. 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 Uh, I used to love T-Shirt Hell. Uh, it was a great fucking site. Uh, but you knew that the person behind it was a good person mm. uh, because there was one holiday season. He said he's shutting down T-Shirt Hell like I'm not making enough money da, 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 da. and he had like a huge sale. And he made like a million dollars. And he said, I was fucking with y'all. I'm taking that money as Christmas bonuses for my staff. We ain't going anywhere. And I was like, that's so (laughs) cool that you can see that someone could put out really, really horrifically terrible, tasteless, funny shit. But in the real world, be like a human. Yeah. And so like that's kind of the blueprint for what this became was like, dude, we can make jokes about anything and everything. (laughs) It's everything's going to piss people off. We get the emails daily. It's almost part of the brand. It's literally like South Park now, right? Like it's like we have to step on every toe or else we are choosing a side. Right. Um, Like the one we've been playing with and I'm like, we're probably going to drop it is I survived the Holocaust. (laughs) Oh, it's rare that I see Dan go head down directly. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, yeah. So we have a thing in the office where, like, somebody throws out an idea, and if someone goes, oof, uh, it usually means, all right, let's marinate it a little bit longer. Because, like, because every, every project I try, we try to do is I always try to be like, all right, let me, if I can defend it, we're doing it. And it's like, you know, we, uh, ooh, dude, we're dropping ping pong paddles that say ping and pong on it with two Asian guys' faces. <laughs> like, when do those it's come just, out? Uh, those are coming in like a few weeks. But it's just like, we're just going to do dumb, silly shit. It's like, it's it's childish. It's moronic. Well, but, I, I, the, but at the end of the day, we take a lot of the stuff in the real world. And, you know, you see us like try to help any fans who have like problems or, you know, we're doing boob job giveaways. Like, I don't know. Just want to have fun. That's what I mean about like what a podcast is. The brand is the same way. We have no red tape. Like three weeks ago, when people were going to the beach in Cali somewhere, we we're like, "Yo, let's just piss everyone off." And we hired a banner. It was a hundred foot banner. We flew over the beaches that said, "We're all doomed," and it said, <laughs> "AssholesLiveForever.com." Like you can't do that if you have a company with like execs and like who's like, "Oh, we got to run this out." Like who's this going to piss off? Who's going to upset? Well, that's it's like. Just do it. Well, let's try it. I've Why got, not? So I've got, you know, that uh, that doormat you guys make that says assholes live yeah. here. I have that in front of my door in my apartment complex, right? Yeah. So uh, uh, I was walking down the hallway the other day and I saw this lady looking at it uh, and just like with her fucking old Karen face on. And I, right. I, I decided that I was uh, going to have some fun that day. So as she, she kept walking and walked by me. I'm like, can you believe this person? Like, who would put something out like that? And she goes, oh, I don't know. And I just walked over and put my key in the door. I'm like, fucking asshole. And unlocked the door <laughs> and walked into my place and closed it behind me. And I don't know what happened to her, but I think she may have died. Yeah. Oh, my uh, God. That's so good. <laughs> it's little moments like that that, you know, keep me going, to be honest. It does. Right, like, I don't know. I don't think I let enough. Like, there's so little that can ruin my day from, like, that kind of shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I there, mean, there's nothing that really bothers me on a on a daily basis where I'm like, "Fuck you!" Unless I get cut off, like that's. Do you know how so bored annoying. you have to be that a doormat bothers you? Like oh, yeah, you're just yeah. looking for somewhere to do something that day, so you can pat yourself on the back and be like, "I helped" by being angry at a doormat. 
<laughs> posting black squares on the internet. Exactly. Like like Los Angeles right now. Like I'm sure you've run into some of the worst humans on earth. New York's a different story. No, I have not yet. Really? Because I've only been here since the pandemic. I literally go to the warehouse and home. There's nothing to do. I, uh, I was so excited. I was so excited. That's why I don't even feel like I'm really in a pandemic because uh, if I was in New York, I would know the difference. When I'm here, and I've only been here for the pandemic, I don't know what LA really is like before the pandemic. So this is, to me, this feels like normal. Like in New York, I'd have more perspective on like, oh my God, this is like out of control. To me, I'm like, I don't know, I'm just gonna work it back. Like, yeah, I guess there's no traffic, so that's a plus. Uh, <laughs> Wait till it opens back up. You'll have so much fucking content being there. Uh, it'll alter your mind. Like the, the, the shit you're gonna be able to come up with there. Well, you're gonna see stuff like that. I don't know if you saw that video of that woman who had the the Latino dude working on a thing. He was, like, putting plywood over oh, windows. Yeah. And she took the opportunity to have her husband or whatever take a selfie of her, and she goes, thank <laughs> you, and handed him the drill back, and the fucking plywood comes down. Like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> like, I don't even understand how that crosses, like, somebody's mind. Mm. Right? Like, that level of, like, just, like, what does that do for you? Like, what I, does that, like... I, I do understand, though, because we've been conditioned to – post thoughts and prayers as as a means of activism That's... hold on don't don't move <laughs> literally don't move <laughs> this is what happens when we have fucking stoned people on the show that's great isn't it at least i can keep the conversation going and don't disappear halfway through the show you guys can't blame me for I, anything i guarantee you he's bringing back a thoughts and prayers t-shirt or a whiteboard I uh, want to one, draw one that of butt plug. It's one of the two, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Or maybe both. I don't want to exclude it. I'm surprised by the way, I'm surprised he's never used a butt plug. All right. All right, what do we got? What do we got here? It's a trash can. <laughs> no fucking for you to, way. For your thoughts and prayers. For you this will accomplish just as much. <laughs> as <talking to> <laughs> Literally I, we just dropped it this week. Did I'm, you really? Guess I'm going to need Yeah. To get, get What's your web, shout out your website? Uh, guys, go to it's assholesliveforever.com, but because at Facebook doesn't like curse words, we also use lindafinegold.com. So uh, either so of those URLs funny. will work. Did you just uh, try I to gotta, pick? I, did you try to pick the most Jewish-sounding old lady name that you could possibly find? Yes. Yeah, I yes. figured. The idea, what, dude? This is the best part. We've been with uh, like our credit card processor now for three years, mm -hmm. and like a year and a half into it, we're on the phone with Chase. And we do so much shit through them. Like, you mm. would think they know who they're in bed with. Mm -hmm. And they're like, yeah, so Linda's fine gold. Like, so you guys, jewelry, huh? That's the, All these sales are from jewelry. Huh? I'm like, are you guys? <laughs> Did you even go to the website? <laughs> Dude, they don't know anything. They fucked up. The, the first year, my fucking cell phone number showed up on everyone's billing statement. Oh, my God. Oh, I literally would get phone calls after, like, a big sale. You know, people are like, where's my order? Like, it's like, hold on. Like, we've got a lot of orders. It's all being shipped out. But, you know, Amazon ruined all that. So, like, everyone wants everything shipped the same day. Yep. Yep. They want it in their hands the next day. And literally my phone number was on every single credit card statement for a good year. No way. I'm surprised you answered. Yeah, sometimes it was fun to talk to them. <laughs> Dan's troll was I answer uh, I answer uh uh telemarketers all the time. And I used to back in the day when this was still kind of a thing, I used to invite the Mormon and Jehovah's Witnesses people in all the time. I'm like, all right, tell me your story and I'll tell you mine. Yeah. Dude, yeah. my grandma when we moved to America would hang out with Jehovah's Witnesses so she could learn English. It's not a bad ah, it's not a bad did, way to do would, it because they won't they shut would the come fuck door up. to door. Yeah. <laughs> they and they would come in, they'd come in and she'd sit down with them. I'd be like what are you hanging out with them for? She's like, I don't believe anything they say, but I'm just trying to learn English. So she just talked to them all day. That's, the that's a very <laughs> utilitarian Russian mindset. Yeah, right. Yeah. She's a, yeah. Just that, that, yep. that. Yeah, I like that. Uh, what were you saying? You think you'll ever get married? Um, yes. Married that's a, with that's kids. a yes. If it's like, not an like immediate the, no, then it's a yes. Yeah. Does, does Kirill grow up a, and become a, a dad? I, uh, I think I'll become a dad. Marriage to me is more, yeah. Uh, when I, I'm not a big, like I want to party. Yeah. But I don't want like a dude. I think giving somebody an expensive ring and throwing a and, and, and an overpriced wedding is a giant waste of money. Yeah. Especially yeah. in the in these times, right? Like if I have to prove my 
my commitment to you by spending 25 grand, then you're a moron because we could take that 25 grand and like do something real with it. Yeah, we could buy $25,000 worth of cocaine. Yeah, or a house. Or one, one ghost bed mattress. You don't know. Yeah, no, ghost beds uh, no, they're, they're, they're a decent price. Yeah, they're, they're, they're affordable. Price. I think you get no, no, the, the cocaine's the cocaine. for free. Though. The cocaine's for yeah, free. Yeah, you don't have to pay for that. Yeah, uh, yeah. but I, I did it. So that's what I did. Me and my wife got married on a beach with just our family, and it was like, I don't know, 10 people total. Yeah. Um, in and out, had a dinner, and uh, enjoyed a, a hotel suite people, and all that other shit. Did people and got, complain that they didn't get invited? Got back to work. No, because I, I think secretly, people really don't want to go to weddings. Um, they don't. Like, every time I've gotten a wedding invitation from one of my friends in mail, I'm like, oh, fuck. I'm, now I got to get babysitters. I got to block off a week in whatever shitty small town they're in. Um, and then I got to fly in hotel rooms suits all that other shit and it's uh it's, I, I, it's such an inconvenience it is but i do it despite all that not because i care but because i'm the guy when i show up that has to be explained to everyone yeah. like he's gonna yes. say some yes. stuff he's gonna yes. say and do some stuff that's gonna like it, you're gonna feel like a you're way the guy it. that they worry about most where to see like yeah. i'm that guy they're like, like yeah. all right crow's gonna be at our wedding yep. Who can we place him around that he won't say something dumb and offend? Yeah, yeah. Basically, is it? Yeah, I, I don't know if they yeah, if they worry so much about me offending people because that's just going to happen either way. Yeah, I, mean, I think they're just trying to minimize it, mitigate as much as possible, right? Like you're saying, so just put him yeah. in a place maybe with your old racist uncle or something like that. I was going to say, you, <clears throat> usually you do great around older people. Yeah, yeah, because they either can't <laughs> hear you or they're not offended by the shit I'm saying. No, Although you yeah. can always find you can always find stuff to offend older people. Oh yeah, like my I always talk about the movie Logan's Run whenever I'm around old people because mm -hmm. you get in that movie you get killed after thirty. And it's yeah, like, yeah, hey, come chips. on, guys, your chips all red, brother. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to get out of here. You're you're eating up all of our resources. That's like old people shouldn't be allowed to drive after a certain age. Oh no, I can fight with them on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and you'll win too because they're old and they can't fight. Right. And that's, that's so, why China created uh, COVID, was to get rid of the old people that they didn't want in their country anymore. Maybe, yeah. yeah I mean, I, mean, I, I don't know. I don't, that seems like an elaborate ruse for China who could just walk around and shoot everybody in the head. Yeah, um, yes and no. But they wanted, I think they wanted to test it out for the rest of the world and just maybe. see what, what was going on. You know? Maybe. They could just be like, do you? I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, I'm kind of one foot in, one foot out conspiracy theorist. Because I, I can conceptualize it all being true. But at the same time, then I'm also a little bit of like a an optimist and like oh maybe not like it's my pessimism that keeps me from believing it because i know that people are too incompetent to pull something off on that larger scale most of the time most conspiracy theories i'm like no right jfk getting right. murdered by the cia absolutely believe that 100 yeah. percent believe that george bush orchestrating 9-11 no no yeah <laughs> sorry man yeah and it, it's a matter of means and talent versus you know the ability to keep something that large secret, right? Right. So, you know, George H.W. Bush, who Evan believes, our, one of our buddies, Evan Haver, believes is responsible for the death of JFK, mm -hmm. could probably have pulled that off with his position as, as an alleged knock in the agency, for sure. sure. George, H, or George W. Bush, as president and uh, uh, senior American cowboy, I believe, is one of his other titles. Yeah. Um, although he's from <laughs> Connecticut, so I don't know how that works. But uh, he's like he's he's the Larry the Cable Guy president. You realize that, right? They're both from fucking Connecticut originally, and then Dan Whitney, yeah, <laughs> Dan Whitney, yeah. So and somehow they're like fucking hillbilly icons now. Yeah, it's amazing. They're, they're, they're huge, man. Uh, there's a part of Connecticut and Jersey and Rhode Island and up there that's just as fucking south as the south. Oh yeah, yeah there's, there's a sticks. lot of white trash up there for sure. Yeah, Quite you go. Bit. I, yeah, you go up there and you're like, there's a lot of missing teeth. What's a, what's a conspiracy theory that you're dipping a toe in? Oh, I'm not. I might, I just think about everything. I, I just, I'm like, oh, what? This could be engineered. This couldn't be engineered. There's so many things. And Reddit is so great because everyone is in their own echo chambers. So you just kind of dip into one group and you're like, oh, what do these people say? And you're like, oh, that makes sense. And you go here, you're like, well, that kind of makes sense. But I guess, you know, it's all that shit makes sense when, you're just taking their facts at face value without. But there wasn't research. one you got behind where you're like, all right, I'll really entertain this. Go. Because we, everybody we have on the show usually has one where they're like, well, and they'll surprise you with it. Like towards the end of the show, they'll be like, well, you know, we believe in this. And you're like, oh, shit. All right. Cool, man. I didn't think that you would. Be I'm more like I'm more on the side of I can't believe people believe um, <laughs> like 
the earth is flat. Yeah. That My one, that only logic, that one's rough to me because it doesn't matter, right? That's the thing. Like believing the earth is flat or round doesn't affect you. Well, like, unless you're a in sailor. In no way. Unless you're an astronaut, what'd you say? Now, if you're a sailor and you're heading east or west, you yes. might want to watch yes. out. Yes. It'll affect you then. <laughs> right, right. But like the, ge- the you most might... of the ge- most of the general population yeah. has no reason. The earth could be a fucking rhombus. It doesn't matter. Like why that's my, those kind of things. I'm like, if that's what you believe, like you're just wasting energy on something that doesn't even like, okay, cool. Fine. If they come out with tomorrow, like you're right. The earth is flat. Like, mm. what are you going to be like? Yes. I want like what? No, you didn't expose anything. Well, here's the, so that's, we, we live in a three dimensional universe and the focus, the focal point of any three dimensional object is its exact center, which is a round object, mm-hmm. right? That's how that works, by the way. Just in case anybody was wondering how physics works, yeah, that's, that's how, how it works. works. There's no such thing. Although it would be fucking dope as fuck if there was a square planet. If you got to the edge and then you had to turn and go a different way, just that'd rates. be fucking amazing, man. Yeah. Can you imagine just being high and doing that over and over? Just going on the sides yeah. of the square? That'd yeah, be great. Yeah, but that, that uh, Elon Musk launch kind of you know squashed all the, the flat earthers the other day. That was trending all day on Twitter Saturday. No, he's a government agent. Yeah, actually. but don't. But yeah, but <laughs> the problem is conspiracy theorists can essentially write off anything, right? Yeah. Like they could be like that footage <laughs> is doctored, or oh, deep fake, and you're like, ugh, like ugh, that the energy it takes to 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 believe in that kind of stuff is like that's why I don't believe in religion. Like I just too much energy, yeah, wasted on something that you're like it doesn't matter. What if Elon Musk on his next launch just takes up fifteen of the top flat earthers? <laughs> And then flies them all the way around the planet. It'd be great. And document you did a documentary yeah. on that of how the just yeah. how can you imagine? They were. Can you and imagine? Then, and that? Then the, yeah. And then the next day, all the flat earthers would be like, oh, "Deep state, yep. they're paid off." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, there's no winning. You can't win. Even somebody who's like that, there's their icon. They'll be like, "Oh, he got bought out. Uh, he's a shill now." Uh, mm. But like, and you're like, unless you hand, unless you walk every single human to the conclusion, it's like. It's retarded. Yeah, mine, dumb. mine is uh, Kim Jong Un. He's been dead for two months now. Uh, I haven't, I, I haven't no seen, seen anything seen or, and heard, or him. heard about him. He's fucking dead. I'm telling you, I haven't seen or heard much from Joe Biden except for him trying to profiteer off the uh, the riots right now on Facebook ads. You know what's weird though? I, I haven't seen Joe. I, I haven't seen Joe Biden speak in a while. Like, yeah. Um, yeah, that that one's is, strange. He's not. He's not, he's not a uh, look. I'm not a big political guy because. I think because I'm white, let's be honest. Like mm-hmm. I'm a white male. Like I always said, like there's very few things that have ever affected me. Right. It's just my my life, I guess. So like politics wise, I'm not really that knowledgeable. But marketing wise, I'm like, bro, if you're gonna try to beat Trump, like you gotta bang a little bit louder than like, or you gotta be present, right? Like if you're <laughs> just from a strategy standpoint, he should be on TV every single day. Yes. Right. Like from a strategic standpoint, like you will not be Trump in marketing, like because there's just that machine is so well oiled in that world. Like it's insane. Well, he's got the perfect confluence of uh, fire and forget content and n- not giving a fuck when people are offended. If you can do both of those things, a, right. a large enough audience will. Yeah, yeah. And he's a quipper, right? He talks in taglines, so it, it's 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 very like advertiser friendly it's just it's just more consumable when you like that 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 like he comes up with nicknames like he does things that definitely market him and that's why you're like dude none of these candidates who run against them they can't compete with that because they're of a different school well i'll tell you who marketing yeah the guy that started all that by the way for conservative politics is a dude named frank luntz he's the guy that came up with death tax to replace the the phrase estate tax he came up with uh, Pro life, that phrase, all sorts of stuff over the years. Like he's a Republican media strategist, and he just thinks of creative ways to say fucked up shit, essentially. Right. To it's kind of it... like uh, if you ever listen to Carlin talk about how like our language has gotten softer. Oh yeah. Uh, he does a great routine. War Memorial on Stadium. PTSD. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, it, yeah. It's a, like that's why I think I like doing the merch because it's like a little bit of that right you get to be kind of witty you get to mm. make statements and and you know it's like when you see like a fun protest sign like ah i gotta go chuckle out of that that's mm. essentially yeah. 
this fucking dumb merch. Yeah. How we it there again. <laughs> uh, here's how we do it over here. We get to the drinking bro of the week is what we end uh, pretty much every show with. Um, I don't. I can't remember a time we haven't done one to be honest. Mm-hmm. With you. So maybe we should just say drinking bro of the day. Drinking bro of the day every day. Yeah, because we've been going <laughs> every day since the pandemic because everybody's out of content. Um, and uh, we a big portion of our audience is military and first responders. So those guys are still working, obviously. Um, so we've been going every single day. We're going six days a week, six out of seven. Jesus. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, this one was. Actually- are you guys just doing a lot of Zoom, or are you guys getting guests, or like the whole fucking pandemic doesn't really is not conducive to like. Mm, we've had both. Or, we've had both. Yeah, yeah. We, we've had both. We've had some people who just didn't give a fuck, and they're like, "Hey, I'll come in," and then others who <laughs> were like, "You know, I, I believe." See, you guys, you guys have like a, a very, very loyal fan base. So mm. this kind of remote thing is good because they're already used to you. Like, I just restarted my podcast, and. I've only been trying to do in-person people because I need that dynamic in person because mm-hmm. I don't think I could start the podcast off of virtual guests. It would just really, I was like, I feel like it would weaken the podcast. Mm-hmm. The yeah. connection in the room is important. It yeah. is. It is actually. Yeah. Um, this this drinking bro of the day today was uh, submitted by RJ Birch. Um, this is the guy, uh, the security contractor who... Um, uh, it was d- disarming a Seattle rioter who had stolen a police officer's AR-15 from a destroyed squad hmm. car on Saturday. Yeah, we're going to have him on the show soon. Yeah, and you know what's <clears> funny, <throat> man? Um, Coffee or Die just did a an yeah. article on him, actually. Yeah. Um, this That video is, has gone viral. Uh, he served four years in the U.S. Marine Corps Infantry in the 1st Battalion, 3rd uh, Marines Alpha Company. Um, and uh, after separating from service... He entered into his current career of military contracting, uh, which has included working as a firearms instructor and security, along with uh, starting a community group on Instagram called Firewatch Official. Um, I don't see his name in here. Um, hang on, I'll tell you. Is it because he's still in? Like, I wonder how that no, works. No, he's not in the military anymore. Hang on, I'll tell you his name. And you guys are getting him on the show? Yeah, he's going to be yeah. on the show in a couple of days. Actually. That's awesome. Yeah, um, yeah. Did you, he, see, did you hear about that guy whose bar, the firefighter in Minneapolis, whose bar got destroyed and they robbed his safe during like uh, the rioting, mm-hmm. and he was like, the local firefighter, his business is destroyed, and I guess they did a GoFundMe and they raised a million bucks. No shit. Get, yeah, that's it awesome. was like it's like the number it's like the number three one on GoFundMe right now. It's really cool. That's fucking awesome, man. Yeah. Um, like, that's my thing. Like, I was trying to find yeah, ways to man. donate or do shit. And it's like, dude, everywhere you turn, so much money's being dumped around. It's like you're trying to find ways to make some sort of positive impact. Yeah. Not, look, you know, there is there, there is a lot of positive stories, too, that, that are have been going on during this as well, where it's like white and black. it's just hard. You just hard to see the positivity. You know, like this is what we do as a, as a people, right? Like we yeah. kind of focus on negativity when there's a car accident. Like we want to want a rubber neck. Like no one, no one cares. No one goes on the news and goes, every plane landed safely today. No, nope. they only tell us about the plane crashes. Right. So it's kind of like we, we are a very negatively focused society. Yeah. I mean, negative press is the only thing that really drives my business, right? Like the outrage. Right. When someone's like, Kirill makes good shirts, no one cares. Someone goes, Kirill makes offensive shirts. And then they're like, oh, what's that over there? Yeah. I can't find his fucking name. No, it's not in this. Mm. It's not in this article. I I, I, I have his number, but I don't think we we probably shouldn't give his home phone number out. Right. Well, there's (laughs) there's there's a reason why he's he's not in here. But I wonder if because he's doing some fucking cool shit. Maybe. Yeah. But we'll, we'll get into it on the show when he comes by what happened. But essentially, it was white teenagers, probably. I mean, I don't know how old they were, but they were like between 18 and 22 probably yeah we're running around fucking snatched up cop guns yep uh somebody Just, asked and this is what i'm curious when he comes on the show somebody asked why the cop left his gun in his car uh uh there there's their rifles and shotguns usually unless they need them for something spe- uh, specifically or in a rack inside the vehicle mm. they stay there gotcha they're not like in the trunk under stuff because it's the police officer needs to be able to access it quickly sure you don't really plan for the eventuality of your car getting set on fire and your weapons getting looted because of a riot. You know what I mean? <laughs> like that's just, you don't you don't build that into your normal day to day shit. So did they, did he got the weapons back from the kids? Yeah, yeah. Apparently the oh, kid, wow. the one that you see in the video, that kid would had shot four rounds into that police car that was right there. Stop. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. So he walked up and held him at gunpoint and took the fucking weapon away from him and then. Dropped. I I like guns. 
I'm just bad at them. So like, I know if I ever, I, I want a gun and I'm like, I think if anything happened that I needed to use it, I'd probably get so flustered. I'd shoot myself or my girlfriend. Well, like I just, we can, I, we can help you with that. Yeah. <laughs> Dan can train you real quick. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm more, I'm more of like, Oh, let me have a panic room over like a gun. Well, you can have both. Because then I can go in the panic room and call people with guns to get a, go get a get a panic room and then have a crew served weapon mounted on it. And you could shoot over the top. And then you're good to go. Like like I always wonder, like, why not just build a house with just sleeping gas in the vents, right? Like, oh, someone breaks in, you're like, honey, let's go in our little closet. Boom. Every it's a nonviolent like de escalation. Police show up, take away these criminals. There's no need to shoot. There's nothing. Like right. everyone go to bed. I know from my perspective, uh, I wouldn't get to shoot someone, and that would really affect my life. Why? Because I want to. But why wouldn't you get to? Because I, if he's knocked out on sleeping gas, I can't walk him and put two rounds in his head. Eh, you can, no, man. You no, know, you, you want to make sure he's out no, for good. No. He's sleeping for good. No, I mean, you could probably put some gloves on and asphyxiate him or something like that, but look, that's a lot more work than just me rounding a corner and shooting some dum-dum three times in the chest. What you just said is reverse strangulation. You strangle somebody else while you masturbate. I mean, that's that's also a kink that you should have you ever had, Have you ever been uh, privy to like a burglary, a robbery, or you like? I've never had anything happen to me. No, so I, I have. I've, I've been robbed no. three times, and all the, so all three times I was sleeping, and I never heard the guy. And they were in and out, and uh, one guy was in and out in 19 seconds, um, and he came in, and he only took wallets and keys. Um, and he was in and out in 19 seconds. I was sleeping. The other one, there was a, we, we had a, I had a guest house out back and, uh, we decked it out as like a fucking man cave with like TVs and video games and all those shit. And, um, there was a ping pong table in there and they, when they came in and stole everything, they folded the ping pong table up so that you couldn't see through the, the window of the guest house that anybody was in there. And then they took uh -huh. all the shit out the back and I was like, God damn it! But I was having some work done at the house, so I know I know who fucking did that. Um, and I told homeboy, I was like, "Hey man, I know it's your guys." Like, and they took right. it off the price of whatever they were doing. Um, and then the other ones, and, and all of these were L.A. by the way. And then uh, three, I've had three cars stolen there in Los Angeles. Total, yeah. Two were all three were recovered though. I will say that the police found them. So. Uh, no, I've never had the opportunity, to be honest. Not that I would invite that. Like, I'm not trying to. It's too much paperwork at that point, to be honest. It sucks. But, yeah, it's miserable. Yeah, but like, I would love to. I mean, like exacting justice is kind of on brand. Oh, for that's me. yeah. Uh, oh, so, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's the that. shower fantasy, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You stand in the shower and you're like, don't. If, oh, if it was me, like, oh, it was like <laughs> well, I've that. Oh, I've got... I've been in dozens of gun, real gunfights still. So for me, it would right. just be like it's it's. I don't want to say this. I don't want to sound like a fucking psychopath here, but it's a little bit of a fucking badge to get a stateside kill. Yeah. You know what I mean? Do you, have, you don't have one. No. You no. don't have one. So at least you still have a dream to stay alive for. Yeah. Yeah, at some point, someone's going to fuck up. <laughs> right. Oh, my God. And just hopefully so, it's your I'm, house, I'm, you know? Right. I've been, oh, man, I've, I've, been, I've been carrying a concealed handgun for, uh, let's see, 18 years now. And... Uh, every single day most most every day um and i've i've never had to actually pull it out i've put my hand on it before in one situation but i've never actually had to remove it from my pants to do anything not once in that whole time but i've still not stopped carrying it every single day of course you know what i mean yeah, yeah. The only like could you envision using it outside of your home like in a in a situation oh yeah like, like if i saw uh, somebody getting robbed at gunpoint i'd shoot that motherfucker in the face um, a number of times. See, my whole thing, my whole thing would be, I'd be afraid that somehow I would get in trouble for that. We well, just got to know the law. Like, there's, there, it's called aggressor laws, right? So, uh, it kind of establishes who's in the right and who's in the wrong. For example, you right. can you can use uh, deadly force in almost every state to protect yourself if you have a reasonable threat of uh, right. death or serious bodily injury, provided you are not the person who initially instigated that. Like, if you walk up and punch somebody in the face. And then he pulls out a bat and tries to uh, come at you. That 21-foot rule in a lot of states doesn't apply. Yeah. Like a 21-foot rule is if you have a melee weapon, whether it's uh, a blunt object or a knife or something like that, and you're within 21 feet of me and you start to move forward, I can shoot you in the face. So some of that stuff gets changed around a lot if you're the original asshole. You know what I mean? And it, it's, it. it's meant to protect 
people from getting baited into shit, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. If you don't have like the, my, cr- yeah, like my craziest gun experience, sorry, I mean, interrupt you. No, it's like, ahead. I had to go to Guadalajara with little John once, uh, what? To, do, to go, to go visit the Don Julio distillery. Like in 2010, Don Julio made like me and little John, a few other people like ambassadors mm. at the time I was drinking a shit ton of Patron and all my party photos had that. So Don Julio was like, come on our team. And I was like, eh, whatever. So they flew us to Guadalajara and you land and this fucking trucks that pick you up is like, we had a procession of like six like SUVs with guys with guns and they would follow us to hotel, to nightclub, to the distilleries everywhere. And I, you know, I'm curious little white jewish kid like i gotta ask all these questions and i said like what what's the reasoning behind this i said well it's like man on fire a lot of kidnappings Mm. and uh and i was like yeah but do we need this much fire like this is more petrifying to me just thinking that i have to like act normally in this situation when there's like this many dudes like what do they know that i don't uh and they said no you don't need this they're like we just like to have a big dick swinging contest just so they don't get curious to try like, this is all intimidation. They're like, we can handle this without them, but we don't even want to give them a reason to try. Mm. So they're like, this is more of like, hey, we're riding around like this. Like, don't even try to pull us over. You know we, we can kill you. What's it like partying with Little John? Uh, most hangover I've ever been in my life. Every time. <laughs> that man drinks so much tequila. It's insane. Mm. Insane. I think there's. I've I've done quite a bit of drinking with quite a few uh, black people. I grew up in a black neighborhood for a long time, um, and I've done. I've got a lot of friends that I've done some serious drinking with. And I thought, like going to parts of Europe where they drink professionally, like Poland or fucking uh, Ireland or something like that. You learn a thing or two about what you thought was drinking when you were in high school and college. You're like, damn, these motherfuckers are just like on a different level. Black, it's it seems like uh, black dudes especially will ha- have their one drink and they can drink an infinity of it and still maintain their yeah, upright it's... position. Like as long as they drink whatever it is, their vodka or whiskey or fucking tequila, which they stay Penny. with their brand, whatever Penny, the yeah. fuck it is. Yeah. They can, because my buddy Malin used to be able to do that. He would drink whatever fucking brand it was. He would drink it. And I'm like, man, I'm fucking hammered. He goes, shut up, bitch. I'm like, what the yeah. fuck? Man? Yeah. Like cases. But it's like, it's like, yeah. But as soon as they drink something else, it's over. I wonder what that is. There's got to be some kind of scientific explanation for why you can drink the same kind of drink and then it doesn't affect you that much. And then when you switch to something else, it fucks you up. There definitely is, but you're looking at the wrong moron. You're the one with all the an- you're the one with all the answers on this podcast oh. discussing physics and the square earth and Albert Einstein, and I don't really know anything. Well, I didn't I know mean, that Einstein had kids, so there's always room I didn't for know that. Yeah, always now, room I, for now I know, and knowing is half the battle. Kirill, where can everybody find you on the social uh, media? My Instagram is just Meany, M E A N I E. Uh, if you're listening to this podcast and it's like four months later, I'm sure I've gotten kicked off. So I'll have <laughs> no, this will be up and at him on Sunday night. Sunday yeah, Sunday night. night. Oh, no, no, no. I just mean that this podcast, if someone goes back in time and listens to it, this account is probably not going to be active at oh, the rate yeah. that they delete it. Uh, well, look, I, th- I think on the last one, I plugged my old one. So yeah, yeah you yeah. can just follow Linda Feingold on. Uh, yeah, do that, guys. Just just visit the merch store. Yeah, <laughs> give me some of your money. Give me some of your money, and I'll waste it on really dumb, silly shit that you've always wanted somebody to do. <laughs> Kirill, man, you're one of the funniest dudes out there. Thanks for being on the show. Uh, for uh, Kirill, Anthony, Anthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This is Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>